Hey everyone, with Classic TBC now out for a few weeks, perhaps you have seen it around on players' names. The title, Champion of the Naru. One of the coolest titles in TBC, reminiscent of an epic questline which has you go all over Outland killing the strongest foes that the Burning Crusade has to offer. And eventually, just like it's sometimes the case with epic titles, this one will be removed and whoever has it will be looked up upon. Champion of the Naru is a title added in Burning Crusade. To Reward players who have completed the long and epic quest chain required to obtain the Tempest Key, an item which was initially required to enter the Tempest Keep raid, but that was later removed in patch 2.1.2. So to reward players who still went through the trouble to complete this quest line, later in patch 2.3, Blizzard rewarded everyone who did it with the title Champion of the Naru. Right now in Classic TBC, the title is obtainable right away from Phase 1, for whoever completes the chain. But obviously, Tempest Keep is not released yet, and we're not sure whether Blizzard will make obtaining the Tempest Key a requirement to zone into the raid for players. Nonetheless, you're here for one reason, and that is to obtain the title. So without further ado, let's get into it. This chain comes in two major parts. The first part is mostly soloable and takes place in Shadowmoon Valley. The second part requires you to clear multiple heroic dungeons and all the raids available in Phase 1. That is Karazhan, Gruul and Mctheridan. Let's start with the first part. In the fell burning roads of Shadowmoon Valley lies two small garrisons, Shadowmoon Village and Wildhammer Stronghold. This is where your journey to obtain the title Champion of the Naru begins. Speak with either Earthmender Sophorus or Earthmender Splinthoof, depending on your faction, to take the quest The Hand of Gul'dan. Either NPCs will send you to Earthmender Torlock near the Hand of Gul'dan Volcano. This is where you turn in the first quest. Earthmender Torlock will have you do a few quests to capture an elemental of every type. There's three quests to do, each asking you to capture a different type of elemental. And once you do that, an RP event will start where Torlock and his companion will speak to the elementals, offering them vengeance from their master, Cyrak. You can then proceed with picking the next quest, Oranok Tornheart. This will send you to the orc Oranok Tornheart up north near the Coilscar Cistern entrance, who might be the only person in the world who knows how to summon the elemental lord Cyrak. But obviously, Oranok refuses to speak until you help him with some personal matters. What follows is a couple of pick X item and kill X amount of mobs quests. The quests are called I was a lot of things and a lesson learned. Both both are quite easy and take place in the fields up north, so we won't waste too much time with them here. Once you have completed a lesson learned, Oranok will finally be willing to speak to you about your quest for the Cypher of Damnation, which are the words needed to summon the elemental lord Cyrak. Oranok then tells you a story revealing that the Cypher of Damnation are the last words that Gul'dan used to shatter Draenor into what is known today as Outland. He also tells you that Illidan is the one who find the cipher and decided to split it in three parts and charge his lieutenants to take care of them. Oranok sent his three sons to recover these chapters and your mission is now to speak to each one of them and help them recover each part and bring it to him. Oranok will now give you three quests, each one sending you to one of his sons and each one having its own set of quests. All of these can be done solo except one which we will get to in a moment. Let's start with Gromtar. You will find him in the Coilscar Point, not far from where you picked the last three quests. There you'll find Gromtok torturing a Naga prisoner. He reveals to you that the first fragment of the cipher is hidden in a chest in either the Coilscar Point or the Coilscar Cistern. And in true WoW fashion, you'll need to open a bunch of them until the RNG is good enough to you that you'll find it. So head down south and just kill all the mobs you see around until you get the keys. And use the keys to open the chests placed randomly around here. Once you get the first fragment, return to Gromtar, turn in the quest and take the next one which will have you return to his father Ornok. But before you go back to Oranok, let's first get the last two remaining fragments. Go to the Eladari point, southwest of Shadowmoon Valley, on top of the Wildhammer stronghold. There you will find Artor's dead body, hanging in the air surrounded by demons. Interact with him and get the quest Demonic Crystal Prison. This will have you kill Pain Mistress Gabrisa north of here to get the crystalline key from her. 
Return to Artor's corpse, turn in the quest, and his spirit will appear before you. He will charge you with completing the quest that he failed to accomplish himself. And he will give you the next quest, Long Torn, Long Bow of the Torn Heart, which is his long bow that a demon stole from him. Again, in true WoW fashion, you will have to kill a bunch of mobs until they randomly drop the long bow. Return it to him and take the next quest, Cypher of Domination, Artor's Charge. You will then have to travel south accompanied by Artor until a demon called Venetus the Many appears. Kill Venetus and loot him to recover the second part of the Cypher of Domination. Go back to the middle of the demon town and speak with the spirit of Artor again, he will then ask you to take the fragment to his father. But before that, we must finish the last part of this quest, the third fragment. South of Shadowmoon Valley and north of Eclipse Point, you will find Borak. Borak reveals to you that he has been unsuccessful in gathering any clues about the third fragment, but that Illidan sends an envoy here every day. Borak has not been able to separate the envoy from his bodyguard though, but he has a plan. The envoy appears to be addicted to blood thistle, so you'll need to get your hands on some before proceeding. Take the quest of Thistlehead and Eggs and head west to the Arakoa ruins nearby. There, loot the rotten Arakoa eggs until you get one in your inventory. Once you have it, head to Shatrat and speak with Tobias in Lower City. This will start a hilarious RP event where Tobias cracks open the putrid rotten egg and drinks its content, making everyone around him puke. He will then give you the next quest, the bundle of blood thistle. With the blood thistle now in your possession, you can head back to Borak in Shadowmoon Valley and turn in the quest. The next quest, to catch a thistle head, will have you place the blood thistle at the other end of the bridge, opposite to where Borak stands, until Envoy Icarius comes and smells the blood thistle. He then asks his bodyguard to go forward on his own, and that's your chance to deal the final blow to Icarius and recover the Storm Rage missive. Return to Borak, turn in the quest and pick the next one, Shadow Moon Shuffle. Borak will charge you with retrieving 6 Eclipsian armor from the Eclipsian Blood Elves down south, and obviously not all of them will drop it. But after you get 6 pieces of armor, head back to Borak. He will then give you the quest What Illidan Wants, Illidan Gets, where he asks you to equip the Eclipse in disguise and enter the Eclipse Point. Head south and just follow the stairs path until you see Grand Commander Rusk. Speak to him until you convince him to transfer the third fragment of the Cypher of Domination to another location. Go back to Borak and pick the last quest, Cypher of Domination, Borak's Charge. This is where you'll need a group of 4 to 5 players to help you. Between the Warden's Charge and the Dragon Maw Fortress, you will find Rule the Darkener, a Blood Elf riding a Nether Drake. This guy hits hard and has a lot of HP, so I suggest you get at least 4 other players to help you with this, including a tank and a healer. But once you kill Rule, loot him to get the third and final fragment of the Cypher of Damnation. Head back to Borak, he will then send you back to his father Oranok. Once you're back at Oranok, return all three quests that you should now have to him, and he will give you the last quest of the first part of the Champion of the Naru title, the Cypher of Damnation. Remember why we got the Cypher of Domination? To summon Cyrek the Fire Lord. Again, here you will need a group of 5 players, so head back to the Altar of Domination at the base of the Hand of Gul'dan Volcano and click the Cypher of Domination. This will summon a giant fell fire elemental and an RP event will start. Speak with Oranok when you're ready, and with the help of 4 other players, take down Cyrek. Once you succeeded, speak with Earthmender Tornok to turn in the quest. This ends the first part of the Champion of the Naru questline. The second part is more straightforward, but will have you do tougher challenges, like clearing heroic dungeons and raids like Mctherdan's Lair and Karazhan. To start the second questline for the Champion of the Naru, the Trials of the Naru, you must head to Shatrat and speak with Khadgar. He will give you the quest The Tempest Key, which you can turn into a doll just nearby. This will unlock 3 trials of the Naru quests, Mercy, Strength and Tenacity. Grab all of them and let's talk about what you'll need to do from easiest to hardest. 
First, Trial of the Naru Strength requires you to clear Steam Vaults and Shadow Labs in Heroic. Just do a full run and loot the bosses at the end to complete this quest. Easy enough. Although, remember that Heroic Dungeons are no joke to complete, especially early on in the expansion, and you will need to be revered with both the Scenarian Expedition and Lower City to access both of those dungeons in Heroic. Next, Trial of the Naru Mercy has you save three prisoners from Heroic Shattered Tolls by reaching the last boss fast enough before he executes them. Basically, after you kill the first boss, Grand Warlock Nether Rusk, you will have 55 minutes to clear the rest of the instance and kill Kargath Bladefist. It should be easy enough, but if you keep wiping and fail this quest, you'll have to try again the next day, as Heroic Dungeons only reset every day. Next, Trial of the Naru Tenacity requires requires you to do a run of heroic Arcatraz with one small catch. You need to keep Milhouse Mana Storm alive throughout the fight with the last boss, so ask your healer to heal him as much as possible. Again, it should be easy enough, but if you fail this, you'll have to try again the next day. You're almost there now. The first to last quest is the Cudgel of Kardash. Head to heroic slave pens and speak with Skarthis, who is a naga that you will find once you do the big jump in the water close to the end of the dungeon. Skarthis will give you the quest Cudgel of Kargash, which asks you to recover the Earthern Signet from Gruul the Dragon Killer in Gruul's Lair and the Blazing Signet from Nightbane in Karazhan. Obviously, those are raids and it's hard to tell how hard of a time you will have to kill those bosses, but it is worth noting that Nightbane is considered harder than Gruul, so make sure you have a decent enough raid once you take on those challenges, and just loot them and that should give you their Signets, which you can turn in back to Skarthis and heroic slave pens. You should now be attuned to Serpent Shrine Caverns. Again, if Blizzard decides to have those attunements required once the raids are released. Your final challenge to get the title is finally here. Trial of the Naru Mctheridan. Pick this quest from Adal and Shathrat and head to Mctheridan's lair with 24 other players to take on Mctheridan. This boss is not easy, especially if your raid lacks coordination, but if you manage to kill him, you can then head back to Adal to retrieve your amazing title. Congratulations on becoming champion of the Naru. And that's it. As I said, this quest is an amazing and epic forgotten questline, which is a available right away in a classic TBC. If you haven't already, I would recommend doing the initial quests. That way, if you incidentally get invited to a Gruul, Mag or Kara raid, you'll be able to get these done and receive the epic title which will be removed once Wrath of the Lich King is released. With that, this marks the end of this video. I had a lot of fun making it. Let me know in the comments if you guys plan on doing this quest. And if you're already in the process of doing it, let us know in the comments which part you're on. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more content like this. I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.